The thing about comparing rates at Progressive.com is that by now you've heard a lot of ads about comparing rates at Progressive.com. We probably don't even need the words comparing rates anymore to remind you that seasoning steaks at Progressive.com is an easy way to save on car insurance. Or that swimming in trousers helps you find the lowest rate. And that's the thing about foraging for truffles. You've heard a lot of ads about standing tiptoe on a cinder block. Compare rates and <clears throat> sing softly to a wounded field mouse and save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Wendy's new classic chicken sandwich is now in the two for five. And that's reason to celebrate. Try the new classic and then take your mouth on a victory lap with the iconic Dave's single. The delicious spicy chicken sandwich, spicy or crispy 10-piece nuggets, or just get another classic chicken sandwich. Taste greatness today with Wendy's two for five. We got you. For a limited time, a la carte only. Price and participation may vary. Less Wendy's. Thank you for visiting ChristopherMedia.net. From Asthma Core Studios near Detroit, Michigan, it's Unregimented. Gangsters, what's up, guys? And now, here are your hosts. What is going on? You guys yeah, anything have, special uh, happened today? Wait. Like, my head's been buried in the sand for a week, not because oh. I chose to, but because I've been working like 10 hours a fucking day. Uh, the internet flipped over a couple times at uh, Trump's choices for his cabinet. Whatever. Uh, well, why would they, let me guess, they, they did something the internet, he did something the internet didn't like. Shocking. Who did well, he pick? If you like your medical marijuana card, you really ain't going to like his choice for attorney general. Who do you pick? Uh, Jeff Sessions is the AG. Uh, he's just anti everything except for life. He's definitely pro that. Yeah, he's pro birth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hey, look, are we getting said, into this? Do we need to do introductions? Yeah, yeah we should. Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, that would help, wouldn't it? Welcome to yeah. Unregimented. <laughs> yes, number one something. <laughs> one something, I, guaranteed. I guess it's it's cool that we're to the point where we're we're losing count. One fifty nine. One fifty nine. All right, I'm Chris. I'm Aaron. I'm Rich. And we're all going insane. Yeah, I... like collectively, apparently. Slowly but surely. Well, I, I'll have to yes. confess to having done a little bit of cramming today because, like I said, I thought we were going to get a little bit of reprieve after the election. And, oh no, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm sorry, Rich. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to make sure we got our intros out. What were you going to say? Yeah, apparently he come out and said no good person uses marijuana. Basically, you're you're a bad person if you smoke marijuana, Jeff Jeff Sessions. No, the, nobody, uh, nobody good. Yes. So, apparently, everybody I know is a bunch of horrible people. So, it, I mean, I figured fifty percent, but I mean, everybody, come on. I don't know. I mean, nobody good smokes marijuana. Really, that is an actual quote. Yeah. How old good, is this person? Good people don't use marijuana. How old is this person? Old enough uh, to be attorney general. <laughs> yeah, I mean he looks up there. I don't let's see I don't I don't see an age listed here. Yeah, this but this guy is well he's anti Muslim immigration, he's uh anti gay rights. I don't immigration actually is, is one of his bigger issues, I guess. Now is this one of those positions that has to be confirmed or it's just like hey you're attorney general? The AG does have to be confirmed. All right. So there's a glimmer of hope. Well, so, your hope is in, can the Demo Democrats stage uh, a an actual, uh, uh, oh, shit, what's the term for it? When coup? You, no, coup, yeah. Yeah, no, but uh, when you don't have the majority vote, but you stall it anyway. Filibuster. filibuster. Thank you. Yeah, if they manage to filibuster this or block it somehow... Or just manage to, I don't know how they would convince any Republican to do anything at this point. They have no power, but they have no leverage. Um, it's going to be very difficult, and they're going to have to 
honestly pick and choose their battles as to who they choose to contest in fear of coming off as hypocrites after, you know, criticizing the conservatives for the last eight years of trying to stonewall Obama constantly. Well, it's gonna, I think it's going to have to be they're going to have to weigh what issues do they really want to stand behind because it's going to yeah. be... And somebody's losing out. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, automatically, I think, as far as the federal level, you're going to see a lot more enforcement of federal drug laws because I think he's going to get. To, I'm think he's going to get in as attorney general because honestly, you have reproductive rights, you have immigration, you have uh, Supreme Court justice, at least one at the moment. I mean, you have a lot of issues on the table for the Democrats that are bigger. Than stoners not getting mm -hmm. tickets, and the, basically, and and the you know reviving the drug war is kind of a no brainer for them. I think you don't really have to show a lot of proof that you're doing something. I mean, that's been evident just by how unsuccessful it's been in the last three decades. And see, but I wonder on really that because contested I'm like, oh, the war on drugs is bad. It's fucked up. So you know, well, no, but but again, you know, immigrants, uh, not immigrants, uh, uh, minorities are still the ones that are going to suffer for this because they suffer already from the higher amounts of arrests and convictions on minor drug abuses. Well, we have heard, I have heard clips of our new orange-faced overlord saying that he thinks the war on drugs is a waste of time and money. He doesn't like to waste money. I don't know, and yeah. But we do see him leaning on tried and true arguments. And when you can link cleaning marijuana off the streets with cleaning illegal immigrants off the streets, then that could be lumped in with his plan of, I don't know how he pr proposes to, to do any of this, to actually uh, deport millions of people out of this country. But yeah, well, I... They need they We're, need a, they need some leverage. They need a tool to do this with. And illegal drugs are already a proven tactic when it comes to singling out one segment of the population. Well, also right now, the one thing that I, I guess I, this is a fucked up way to put it, as far as if if, if you're um, you know of Mexican descent or you're here illegally whatever, or you're waiting, you're trying to go through the jump through hoops to be here legally. I guess the one thing you can say that you have going for you as far as the drug war is that we don't have a marijuana slash cocaine problem coming through Mexico into our borders right now as bad as we have. The problems we have right now are heroin related. And those, that does not, that's not being moved in from no. Mexico like it was, like Coke was in the 80s. That's coming from other parts of the world. Yeah. So if they really are, if they, if for whatever reason they really crack down, they can't even legitimize going after people, after pot and Coke but dealers compared to heroin dealers. They don't really want to do anything. The government just wants to be seen as being successful at doing something. And that's why they're going after cigarettes, because the numbers are already dropping in every category. So the more ads they put out there, the more they can say, hey, we, we help bring this down. We help, we help people uh, quit cigarettes, and we help change kids' attitudes by telling them that it, it was going to kill their cats and make them earn less money. <laughs> they run all the medical research that, said we could, that says it can kill you. We right. did it. Right. So if you really wanted to do something about this, how about... Uh, a flashy, uh, vibrantly colored, patterned uh, image of uh, kids running through smoke and pictures of cats that tell you that all this shit is better than dying of heroin. If you really wanted to do something about it, but we don't even talk about hard drugs anymore or even abuse of prescription medication. Which is well, no, part, of, part, of the, that's part of the poppy problem. That's part of the... Right opiate problem not only and where do this, poppies come from right the, well <laughs> well you bring up the opioid the, the, problem then your lobbyists that fucking up john might start fucking giving you the stink eye i'm sorry what were you gonna, what were you gonna say aaron 
Well, I don't know. I was just kind of fuming. It's just, it's ridiculous that the the most recent anti-smoking commercial, have you seen this one where they talk about how smokers make, uh, I don't know, some percentage less than the average worker? Yes. It's it's such a that's, fucked up statistic. Uh, it's so stupid. That's, that's, that's Do we have a smoke a, gap? That's also an, an old trope that they can fall back on. They just, they kind of... Give it a paint job and, and, and you know slap a new paint job and, and, and prance it out every I don't know ten fifteen years because at one point it was look how much money you would spend you're going to spend on cigarettes this is when of course well, they were going to jack the taxes up versus the, not <clears throat> and now it's true. okay there's a there's a wage gap an earnings gap yeah, between uh, oh, smokers and non-smokers which is ridiculous it's if you look at statistics on smoking it does tend it is predominantly people in lower economic brackets that are smokers. It's not that they are smokers and that's why they can't get the better job or the, why their boss won't give them the raise. It's not the cigarette that's keeping them down. It's poor uh, people smoke. It's, it's, it's another, uh, it's right? another opiate it's, for the masses. It's so a relatively speak. affordable vice. Yes. And that's everybody yeah. needs vices, but especially poor people, they need cheap vices. They don't. Why well, than whores? Yeah, they can't afford <laughs> cigars. I would like to point out that um, I think it was maybe about a year and a couple months ago we were talking on the uh, on, on the show about them passing uh, HR. I think it was two zero five eight, and that would basically code name put a, stuff. I'm would sorry. it would it would. It would put a halt on production of any new vaping products past oh, a certain yeah, date yeah. unless you wanted to spend literally a couple million dollars per product. Right, because they would, they would put it in uh, control of the FDA. Yes. And that, and, and that regulation would jack the prices up. And I said the reason I'm against it is because they're basically going after the smaller vaping companies and as soon as this passes they're going to let vaping they're going to stop hammering away at the va- at, at vaping products because the, the the products that are grandfathered in are the products that big tobacco already holds the copyright and trademarks to and that is exactly what's happened and if you've noticed they've ramped down the hysteria about vaping ever since that bill passed and Vaping's basically now in a holding pattern as far as innovation. And so these smaller companies, what's going to happen? The smaller companies are not going to be able to afford to stay in business. They're going to try to get some of their money back. They're going to sell to Big Tobacco. Big Tobacco has almost unlimited funds. They can afford all the the fees to the FDA that they're going to do, and they're going to take over the market. And once again, something that, something that, 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 could have saved lives is now going to go back into the the hands of people who were like, oh, we don't care that we we. I mean, nicotine doesn't kill you. It's the other shit in cigarettes and tobacco that kills you. That's what I was telling. I, mean, I was telling Mikey B. It it's the delivery earlier. system. He, yes, he, he was talking about how he had inherited a, a vaping system. And he was going to try it out, and I was like, well, for the first week, your body will miss the formaldehyde. But then when it realizes it gets a steady nicotine fix and it's not fucking you up, then uh, you know, you're all the better for it. it Rich, your boy, it's something do- that Dr. Drew on. Yeah. said something that you might actually you know, be on board with. He, was ta- he went on a rant a couple weeks ago about leave people who vape alone. It's water vapor and nicotine. And he said, it's not the nicotine that hurts you, it's the delivery system. Yeah, they have no yeah. proof that nicotine is harmful, and in fact, it might even be beneficial in the same way that they're finding out coffee has a lot of benefits. Well, nicotine, I mean, yes, if you have, first of all, in, in large doses, anything could be, almost anything's Any, lethal. Water. Yes. Anything, yes. You ha- so It's all about you have, portions. You have to take that argument from the people going, well, what about... Like the, okay, because the e-juice I order, I get about a about six ounces at once. Yeah. And I buy it in bulk and then use it, you know, over three, four months, whatever. Um, 
Well, if I drank the whole thing, that'd be the last drink I ever took. But who the hell's going to drink six ounces of e-fluid when, right. when you're talking four milliliters is a tank, and at most I've gone through in a day is three tanks. Maybe a rough day at work. You're like, oh, there's, there's people chugging it. Oh. But, I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, okay, so you take Rubbing that argument out. Gums. So what's, what's, <laughs> what's the new argument? The new argument for a minute was, okay, well, it's going to give you popcorn lung. Well, that was certain flavors. And once vapors, before House Resolution 2058 passed, by the way, once vapors found out that certain flavors had a certain chemical in it that could lead to popcorn lung, they stopped buying it. Mm-hmm. And this is this is this is this is an argument for the free market. So thumbs up to all the libertarian listeners. <laughs> and 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 companies produced it until they said, "Well, we're not making any money on it. We're actually losing money to produce it." So they stopped producing those flavors. Right. It's education that drives the consumer's uh, uh, re- responsible choices. And therefore well, which is, decides which companies are, are going to remain in business. That's how the free market works. Well, which but, is funny because vaping is people that vape have been put been painted as Neanderthals and, and idiots and I mean of course then there's the gay shit, you know, and that's okay, whatever. But they're probably more highly educated on as far as Ohm's law, as far as what they're putting in their body, then you are when you're 18 and you can legally buy a pack of cigarettes about what's in that pack of cigarettes. And I don't understand, when did we become a country that celebrates ignorance and wants to shit over people who actually take the time to learn what they're putting in their body? What, uh, on the 11th? Was that the election? Yeah, I'll just say, yeah. <laughs> you've, been, you've been conscious for the last week and a half? Okay, here's the, the day thing. Trump was Aaron elected, said, that's the day. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron said next episode, let's try to stay away from political I shit. I did my best. I, I tried my best to bury my head in the sand, and I was like, but I had to keep kind of an ear to the ground because I didn't know how serious you were. And so it's like, I kind of know what's going on, but I kind of don't. And I dipped my toe was, back in the water today, and I, I feel like... I feel like I need to bathe in Purell. That's was, all I got to say. <laughs> ideally speaking, that would be the idea, but there's, there's just too much to talk about. I, mean, I honestly didn't read a lot of news, but I was very active in the last week on Twitter, so it was impossible to get... Ooh. And let me tell you, people who, comic book writers and artists, super liberal. <laughs> oh, yeah. You think? <laughs> yeah, super. They are pissed. Did you see that Twitter started shutting down some alt right accounts? Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I don't know how I feel about that. Oh, you know, before we move off of, uh, I wanted to get back to Jeff Sessions real quick because I did find a a section from an article in the New York Times today that really kind of sums up what we've been talking about. Uh, let's see, what committee are they talking about here? He's testifying before a judiciary committee. Says in testimony before the committee, former colleagues said that Mr. Sessions had referred to the NAACP, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and other civil rights groups as un American and communist inspired. And African American federal prosecutor Thomas H. Figures said at the time that Mr. Sessions had referred to him as boy and testified that Mr. Sessions had said that the Ku, Klu- the Ku Klux Klan was fine until, quote, I found out they smoked pot. A remark, Mr. Se- a remark, Mr. Sessions later dismissed as a joke. Good job, people under forty. Wait, is that great job? Thanks, for staying home a week and a half ago. <laughs> Four years of this shit. So, d- doesn't that like one paragraph just sum up everything about that you need to know about this guy? It seems like. I hope he doesn't get confirmed. Well, and the other guy is... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. She makes Donald Trump sound like a progressive. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, shamefully, I'm really only post-election understanding how much of a a hand uh, Bannon had in this election and how it really was... Talking about the guy from Breitbart? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's... kind of crazy how even in this short of hindsight 
you can see how there is this convergence of here's well, somebody with an two people with agendas that that come together at this point and they i mean i honestly don't believe that uh a ban what's his first name bannon steve steve yeah i don't believe that he's any more or less racist or extremist than donald trump is i think that they're both playing the same game which is and and bannon's been open and talking about this in interviews of seeing a demographic of America that's not being talked to and realizing yeah. that that uh, xenophobic language and exclusionary language works very well with these people and they're and it's it, it just makes sense where all this shit is coming from right well it speaks to something we touched on several times in the last couple of weeks well Hillary was busy reaching out to disenfranchised minorities. Uh, uh, Donald Trump was hitting up disenfranchised whitey, which, let's face it, there's a lot more, just from a numbers game, there's a lot more of. Well, yeah, and he, according to his uh, nominations for his cabinet, he's going to make good on those promises. It, it wasn't just rhetoric to get elected. I think this is a man looking forward to his second term, so he wants to make sure that he does something about the issues that he's been talking about. The other nominee was... <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> well, hopefully when they start rounding up Arabic people, they'll only see the white half of me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like you Obama. Can, uh, you can you see us. I'm like Obama. You see the half you want to see, right? Right. right. The other guy was Re Representative Mike Pompeo, Pompeo, who has been nominated for CIA director. If this name sounds familiar, maybe it should be as familiar as Benghazi has been in the last few years, because he was one of the. Uh, I don't know, what is it a panel, I guess, right? He would be a member of the panel. He was an investigator, basically, on the Benghazi thing. Pompeo sounds like he got mob ties to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who gets shit done? <laughs> well, one of the, one of the things that, uh, you brought up that I wanted to touch on, not necessarily disenfranchised, non-college educated whites that Trump spoke to but something that I didn't even realize until I really started hearing because <clears throat> the election of Trump has really emboldened some of my friends who kept their support of him under wraps up until the election night until he mm -hmm. until he won basically and right now yeah, I think that's out. why we're seeing a lot of the celebrations because a lot of people didn't want to talk about it until they realized that they they weren't alone they exactly. come out of their they come out of their ignorance closet. Yeah, and a lot and a lot of these guys are union guys, and I'm like, okay, how could you support Trump? Because and they're Clinton like, fucked because because Clinton because, fucked because, him, and he because, said he was going to bring manufacturing jobs back. Yeah, and and, 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 and they were like, because them. the Democratic, well, more so than Clinton, but they said the anyone. Democratic Party has ignored us for decades. Yes, they took us for granted. They assumed they were we were always going they were always going to have our vote. Right. We got white liberals. We can stop talking to them. Who's next? Yeah. And it was like, I, I was actually reading a, 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 a book, and it was, you know, it's a nonfiction book, and they're talking about this, this gentleman comes from a you know, working class, union, Catholic family, and it's how it's almost a given back in the day you know, this would be 50, maybe 40, maybe 60 years ago, in that range, that those votes went Democratic. Mm -hmm. And how, you know, it's almost like your birthright. You know, you have to vote Democratic. And now it's like, no. You know, you have UAW, you have, you know, IBEW, you have Teamsters going, mm -mm, no, well, we're, we're tired of this. And you have open revolt in union halls between this last election, the Trump supporters and the, and the Clinton supporters. And I'm like, how is that never even brought up in mainstream media at all? That was just completely ignored. 
I mean, you could too argue much that when to report on. Yeah, but you could argue too that when the union was solidly in the pocket, we'll, we'll say metaphorically, uh, maybe even literally, of the Democratic Party, um, they fucked them yeah, in, in the mid nineties. Yeah, it's, it's Bill they had their back, them. and then they got all, and then all the jobs went away. Well, I know that if you talk to old school teamsters like my grandfather was, he was a hardcore Democrat up until the Kennedy administration, especially when Robert Kennedy started going after unions. But he really wasn't going after. It's it's kind of not right to say he was going after unions. He was going after the mob who had ties to the unions, and at that point he was like, "Well, fuck that, no." I'm not. I'm not going to support the party that's trying to tear down my union, because that's the way the, the 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 crooked union leadership was portraying it to their members, right or wrong. I mean, that was. And once again, this is a different world. A world I can't imagine living in. Like I, I, I was alive 30 years ago. I can't imagine going back to that. To where if I, I have to look at the TV and listen to what people tell me, and take their word for it without fact checking them you know, through the internet or whatever. So, you know, right or wrong, that's the way he felt. And that's when he became a Republican. And I I can't imagine he was the only one. I mean, that, that left a bad taste in your mouth. And then, Aaron, you, you, as far as newer, the newer generation union members, NAFTA didn't make any friends with them. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I, I think it's... I, I can't blame them for switching sides to somebody that that is at least talking about supporting them. But I don't. If you just fact check the the things that he says very easily, you find he he's talking about things he has no control over. Mm-hmm. And well, I mean, even this week he was talking. Uh, let's see, I've got his tweet up here. Actually, just got a call from my friend Bill Ford, Chairman of Ford. Uh, who advised me that he will be keeping the Lincoln plant in, Ta- in Ke- Kentucky, no Mexico. Um, he didn't get that call. And that information was gleaned from an interview where he said that uh, if Trump comes through on his plans to cut taxes and spend more on infrastructure, they could build, this is his quote, build a stronger, more vibrant, growing economy and provide an environment where it makes economic sense to build build backup manufacturing jobs here, right? Nothing specifically on any plant that isn't going overseas or is. And it's... Uh, that's a reasonable sense. If, if Trump was saying that his tax cuts will allow businesses to build their businesses bigger and faster, that's something that you could make argument for. But all he was, but he, I think he realizes that the people that he wants to talk to, are they're just going to glaze over with that type of language. So it's specifically, the jobs that left are coming back, and I'm bringing them back. I don't. What does that look like in any situation? No president has had the power to go to another country and say, hey, this company that's doing business inside your borders uh, has to shut this shit down because we're moving this shit back to my country. I think we've already figured out this is going to be a president like no president we've ever had. So, Well, I mean... Strap in, people. Wars have been started for less. So you're talking about Pissing off, pe- pissing off other countries to the to the point where they might actually feel like they have to defend themselves. And on hey, top of that, you- uh, in in the U.S., and I'm supposing again, but how else do you get millions of immigrants out of the country other than a very large federal police force? And oh, speaking of cabinet members, here's another one for you, Lieutenant Lieutenant General Michael Flynn for National Security Advisor. This man has said on uh, on Twitter that Islam is a cancer and their leaders should declare their Islamic ideology as sick. 
Not, Yay. Specific, not specifically radical Islam. Just Islam in general. I'm no, well, I mean, if you'd I'm have no said radical... I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm just saying, I'm no, I'm no fan of any religion. But, you know, if he was saying this about Christians, can you imagine... I mean, if you he said if he case. said radical Islam and radical Christianity and radical every religion, yes, I'd agree with him. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Radicalism—that's the key word amongst all these radical beliefs and people uh, people looking for a cause who can't find it amongst their own country or their their fellow citizens, and so they turn to this thing that they feel binds them together, and. Other people who, uh, other, it leaves them open to be manipulated by others who use that religion to do horrible things. But anyway. Gonna give them a reason. Oh, no, yeah, definitely. It's, it's literally pouring kerosene on a fucking out of control house fire as is. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's piss them off more. But I mean, ultimately, how? I mean, think about how different Bush was after after nine eleven. And he, I didn't really hear anybody criticizing him at the time for saying that. Uh, I think it was, I can't remember if he said Islam is a a religion of peace or he said Islam is a religion of love. You said, yeah, it's a religion of peace. A religion of peace, yeah. And and he was able to talk rationally. I mean, maybe we were just more primed to listen in that in the aftermath of that tragedy. And now uh, we're just back to our, our own self centered navel gazing ways. But how can we can't hear that message anymore that we heard from one conservative leader? But there's no more room for, for gray area here. If you're Muslim, you have no business being in this country. That's the message that's being sent. How scary is it that we're sitting here in 2016 opining and about how we miss Bush and his nuanced approach to things? <laughs> right, I know. That that's is fucked insane. up. If I played this recording for me, like, if, if I six years ago, a time traveler said, hey, you said this on a podcast. I was like, that must have been taken out First of context. First of all, what's a podcast? <laughs> 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 and second holy shit <laughs> yeah what's it, going on in the is future telling. is everything on fire you keep saying heavy right. what's going on in the future <laughs> what, what are the <laughs> yeah what was the context well uh trump gets elected president well now i know if you're from some weird alternate future that could never be true who's president <laughs> in the future <laughs> Ronald Reagan, the actor. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Donald Trump is president. You just this is what six seven. You start looking for Ashton Kutcher. All right, this thing's yeah. real. Well, exactly. You want, you want some good news on the administration? You want some silver lining in all this mess? No kids. No, not nobody else named Trump is going to be in his administration. Not to say that they won't be doing other things. Who knows what the fuck's going on? But. Didn't his uh, son-in-law take an unpaid position in the administration, though? I did not hear that. This was when I when I pulled out of my uh, my shell and dipped my toe into the water today. It's one of the things I read, oh. and I didn't really have time to see if it was if it was real news or the fake news that you find on Facebook these days. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, if this is true, then we're on to something here. This is this will be what finally nails this bastard to the wall. Some nepotism. <laughs> uh, I, I think, guys, I think he's bulletproof for for the moment. I mean, how long that moment lasts is is up for debate. But I think for the moment, he's like seriously bulletproof. I I don't see how he can't be. Even if he doesn't accomplish anything that he does, he can he can just blame somebody else and say. Well, you know, I would have loved to have done better for you, America, but you've got other people involved in this government that are trying to hamper my abilities here. Uh, well, he's so worried about his brand. Is that that might end up being what happens? 
Wasn't there some kind of settlement today that he did with Trump University? Twenty-five million to settle lawsuits, multiple lawsuits. Yeah, uh, yeah. against Trump Pretty University much what- being a total sham. And damn, it sounds gonna- more like a pyramid scheme than an actual college. Well, I'm just going to guess. This is how the meeting went with the lawyer. I'm president now. What 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 kind of check do I have to write to yeah. just stop all this? Right. I'm thinking yes. I agree with you, I, but the, the lawyer had to come to him. Somebody had to go, look, Trump, you're president now. Settle all this shit. No matter what it takes, find the money and just make it go away. We cannot have a sitting president with active lawsuits against him. Well, if you go by the Clintons, he's going to make $40 million. So, you know, <laughs> he'll be all right. Yeah, our best hope is that he quits after four years because the pay stinks. It's a four hundred thousand dollar a year job, and somehow Bill Clinton's now worth forty four million dollars. So Trump will be all right. Hey, but you know, a lot of people all over the world wanted to see Bill Clinton. I'm not saying there was nothing, no nefarious activity going on there, but I mean, he clearly he made a lot of money in appearances. Dude, he's got to be so pissed. He was. It was probably like, "It's my, it's my comeback tour." His cash cow's gone. No, I don't call, yeah, don't call Hillary a cash cow. I had to cancel the tour. Hey, did you see the? Uh, I did see some things on uh, the internet this week about talking about Hillary emerges and she looks like hell. Like I did oh, see some pictures course. of her. She looks rough. But oh, please, oh, we're uh, we're in for another couple of years of seeing her picture on the Inquirer while waiting in line at the uh, supermarket. Hillary, okay. six months to live. Right, Hillary off Bender. But the one thing I came up with in her defense is you got to think for the last two- black eye after <laughs> Hillary <laughs> punches. But you Hillary think taking for the last- her frustrations on Bill. <laughs> The last two years, she has gotten up every day and has probably had to cake on, tons of makeup, do her hair, have someone pick her outfit, be perfectly coiffed and like fucking... Can I get a fuck it day already? Yeah, that's probably... She was like, hey, listen, I'm, this is what a 70-year-old woman looks like in the morning, all right? Well, that's what I was, that's, that's what I was trying to, to say a couple shows ago. And when I listened back to it, I realized that I just basically referenced her. I was like, you know... My grandmother at her age wasn't, we wouldn't let her hold the remote, let alone run for president. And I'm not saying that. I wasn't saying it because she's a woman and she looks rough. I'm saying that because, first of all, this is how it is in my family. The men are already dead by that age, so they can't run. You know, And the women are just waiting to die. And I'm like, so trying to picture somebody who should be in retirement or gearing up for retirement, running for president, I... I can't imagine the toll it takes on them. Like them, support them, doesn't matter. I, it's nuts. And she obviously has some health issues that aren't being put on you know, front street for whatever reason. I mean, and now that she's, her political what? career is done, it's her business. It's no longer the public's business. So, Well, her career is not done until, what, January 20th? A 70-year-old person has health problems. Get the fuck out of here. I know, right? But we, some, for some reason, we expect politicians to be the picture of health until the day they, they die, which I don't get, you know, but I, wh- whatever. I, bottom line is, I feel bad for Bill. Because, <laughs> yes, he's going to have to wear some foundation or some concealer or something because she's going to... She's going to beat the shit out of him if he pulls his Bill Clinton bullshit and she's around him 24-7, which right. at this point, let's be honest, we should just start a pool. How long until they end up divorced? <laughs> Bill, if you point at me with your thumbs again, I'm going to snap them right off. Exactly. It, it was going to be my pussy comeback to her. <laughs> I was going to go through all my old haunts. <laughs> hey, guess, guess who is a Trump supporter, though? Kanye, Kanye West. West. Yeah, you knew exactly where I was going there. I no told, way. I, I told I, I, I I'm gonna I iced it. I called it. I'm telling you, there's a lot <laughs> is of that, hate. Is just it a rich like, people thing? Just you, I. It's a it's a 
remember, did you see a Saturday Night Live skit with Black Jeopardy where they had Tom Hanks on? Hmm. And he was the, the white Southern. Uh, no, I did not. <laughs> uh, Trump supporter. And they were like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And they said, uh, who you, you know, they named the categories. And it's like, you know, skinny chicks and. Uh, uh, who are you voting for for president? He's like, I'll take who you voting for for president for 200. And they go, so who are you voting for for president? And he clicks in. Doesn't matter. They've already chosen who's going to be president. And the two black chicks that are also contestants are like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And the host comes <laughs> over and sh- shakes his hand. And he's like, take skinny girls for 400. This is what a skinny girl can do for me. And he brings in, he's like, not a damn thing. And the black guy's like, you go, you go. <laughs> My instinctual answer was going to be nothing. <laughs> so I ain't even seen that bitch. I'm telling people, as, if, as, as from, from most of my family being from down south and poor and working poor and having lived in predominantly black neighborhoods, not much difference. <laughs> That's why I'm not shocked. <laughs> he says, hey, well, while we're talking SNL, did you guys see that uh, wait, wait minute, Saturday Night Live with Chappelle? Hold oh, on, oh. but we're not done talking about Kanye yet. We just oh, got started. Can't, no, see, then he's we're a, done. He's a, <laughs> <laughs> in the article on the LA, in the LA Times, it says, Wes escalated his controversial views by saying, this is at a concert, that he personally supported Donald Trump. To booze from the startled crowd, Wes said, I told you all I didn't vote, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but if I would have voted, I would have voted on Trump. <laughs> There's non-political. Let's oh, wait. A minute. He's just babbling now, isn't he? Oh yeah, this is for, he's telling it's the like, crowd. There's non-political so, methods to speaking that I like that I feel were very futuristic, and that style, that method of communication, has proven that it can beat a politically correct way of communication, and I agree with that. So future. So not. Not thinking before you speak is this new revolutionary style of communicating? Because they, they're both guilty of that. How can he say that Donald is futuristic in the way that he talks? Because Kanye West has gone insane. Somewhere around 2008, probably around the time his mom died and his girl broke up with him. He's gone fucking... Kanye has left the fucking building. Right. I think we've all, we can all agree on that one. He says, I actually think that his approach was absolutely genius because it worked. That's great, Kanye. So you can see something that worked already and call it genius. That's, that's brilliant. Uh, hey, man, you know how that light turned on? It's genius. <laughs> well, if, he was, if he was saying that, uh, you know, that this is genius and that he's, it's going to work and that he's going to win before the election, then I might tip my hat to him. But simply saying that, Oh, this is genius. This worked. That's very observant of you. I heard someone say Kanye needs to just, one, put the mic down, two, go back in the studio and start producing again, and three, shut down all his social media accounts. I kind of agree. Yeah, Kanye needs to get back on the other side of the mic. He needs to get back in the control booth. Yeah, he needs That's to get where on the he other was side the best. of the glass. Because, I mean, look, I, 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 it's not a popular opinion. I think as a producer, he wrote some, uh, he produced and wrote some, some fucking bangers, man. I enjoy his first three albums. I don't go that far. I'll, I'll say first couple. But, yeah, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm half, I'm more than two-thirds away with you. I was good. I was good until, what was it, 808s and Heart, after that, 808s and Heartbreak, I'm done. Like, I, I, <laughs> Like I like late regist cause dropout, late registration and graduation were fucking great. After that, get the fuck out of here. We're done here. I mean I, I to me I thought his career was gonna be more of a Pharrell career. Like a a, a producer who sometimes, you know, does his thing. No. You know, I, I, I didn't understand how narcissistic he was. Completely completely misread that situation. But by the way, yeah, also during that rant, Aaron, he also confirmed that he indeed is going to try to, and that's exactly what I am indeed going to try to run for president yes. in 2020. Yeah, yep. Yeah. He is well, still... Well, fucking he, anything's possible now. Uh, 
I just love the confidence. Oh, I I mean, I mean, I don't, what can you even say to that? Like you can't. Who's going to say that anything? Donald impossible Trump is anymore? our president. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Donald Trump's our president elect. Who the fuck knows? We sure, all Kanye, spent the last ahead. year. Nearly every one of us are like, not going to happen. No fucking way. So who's to say? Anything's fucking possible. Yeah. yeah. Now it's just to the point where I don't want people to want to run for president. If we're just going to elect anybody. Has there been anything more as a country and a society we have just collectively gotten wrong in our lifetime? Our lifetime? Yeah. You know, besides, like, I don't know, new Coke. I. Mm. Let's say we, everyone on Monday, we were, pre- we were preparing for the, the November 10th, we're preparing for the first woman president. Everyone on fucking Wednesday had the same look on their face that fucking Donald probably had when he got elected. Like, what the fuck just happened? Now we're well, preparing for our first Cheeto president, our first overlord. No, you know, to use to use a, a reference back to Bush again, if we compare the two, and how ever, a lot of people, including myself, were very outraged at some of the things he and his administration did, and talking about how well you know he may be popular now, and sure he's getting a second term, and blah blah blah, but history is going to look very poorly on this administration. He's going to go down as the worst president in the history of the United States. Now, looking at, it's really hard to to make those types of statements now with this person, because what makes, you know, well, what makes Donald Trump worse than than George Bush? Uh, The thing is, with George Bush, it was like war, oh, Crimes of war and and uh, and torture, but history. While these things get dredged up here and there, nobody really cares about that shit. At the end of the day, am I right? When when has uh, any kind of war crimes outside of uh, of Nazi Germany or Rwanda? you know, where there's some sort of, of genocide or massacre going on, has it really mattered? It was all yeah, in well, the name of, of winning because you were ultimately right. You were on the side of good. Only and, the losers get tried for war crimes. Right. So, and it's I fu- mean, maybe... And it's funny, too, when everyone screams about George Bush at war crimes, everybody forgets about old Billy Jeff in Serbia and Bosnia. Yeah. Yes, yeah. No, Absolutely. Nobody's going to give a shit about that in the history of books. Now, what could change the, the course of this nation is if he's actually able to put in place a plan that closes off our borders, closes off our trade to the nation, closes off the U.S. in general from the rest of the world and starts regressively pulling back rights for minorities in this country and regressing as a country, that'll be absolutely fucking disastrous. And I'm not even just talking about the people that will suffer in the moment. I'm talking about for generations to come, a nation that will never be able to find its place in this world again because it did the unthinkable at a time where Technology not only allowed us, but it we we were forced to globalize. And I think you put far too much stock in the competence of our government and what they can accomplish in a four year time span. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's only partially about what a government or a man in power can accomplish because while the things that, the things that you say definitely matter and the image that you portray matters very much and not only to uh how our own half of this country looks at or actually more probably more than half now they're saying that the the last count i saw hillary was up 1.4 million votes in the popular vote it, it's more 
outside of just the way that uh, he comes across to the majority of this country, it's the world outside. If even if you're trying to uh, open borders for trade and are, are trying to be part of the global economy and be uh, involved in the world, you, you'll, your language still gives you away. I suppose, but at the, uh, I think uh, Bill Burr made a fantastic point about all of the things that everybody's fretting over that Trump's going to do or try to do or, and whatnot. And he used the wall as an example. He's like, so we're going to build a wall from San Diego to El Paso. And you're saying we're going to do this in four years. This is a government with so, much, so many layers of bureaucracy and red tape and fucking gridlock. He's like, we, the Freedom Tower took 15 years and we wanted it to happen. And you think that wall is going to happen in four? Well, look, the wall's already being rolled back. He's lowering expectations for it. I, my point is, it's not... The damage isn't well, done. The damage isn't done generally. by the damage isn't done by building the wall. The damage is done by talking about and attempting to build that wall. Yeah, but to what kind of what you're talking about? If you remember when W was in power, oh, we we were embarrassed as a nation, and all the rest of the world was looking at us and laughing at us no, at our leader. You're like, absolutely was, right, and I am I am the ex liberal that cried wolf. You know, <laughs> but there it's it's the opportunity that he has. I mean, think about the things that have made a real lasting difference in this country when it comes to changing laws and changing people's opinions. And that's the fucking Supreme Court. And nobody on that court's looking any younger. There's there's that. And then there's something that I don't think, at least I haven't seen in the media, because it's, it's just not a sexy issue, that has people in the STEM industry, you know, st- in, in, in the STEM fields. Yeah. Or really, STEAM now. Because you got to get the arts in there. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. All right. <laughs> and this is from an artsy fartsy musician and, and half ass <laughs> hipster, and I'm like, oh please. <laughs> Anyways, um, my buddy who I just can we just was focus on to, education that'll get you jobs, please. <laughs> <laughs> my buddy who I was talking to earlier today, you know, he, uh, you know, he's he he works in microbiology, and I'm talking to him, and I'm like, you know, so what do you th- what do you think about this thing with Trump and everything? And he's like. I'm just worried how much this is going to hold us back scientifically compared to the rest of the world. Yeah. And he goes, and, I, and I'm like, kind of, you know, and I've known, I've known this guy for, you know, about 15, 16 years. And I told him, I said, that's how I felt once I heard that, you know, Bush was like, no, we're not going to mess with stem cell research, period. Yeah. We just handicapped ourselves. Absolutely. And, and meanwhile, and, other and countries... Compared to the rest of the world, yeah. yeah. Scientists in other countries are getting Nobel Prizes for this shit in their, in their research and what they can do with stem cells and other... Uh, and, and because of that, other uh, uh, procedures, technologies, whatever you want to call it, other uh, um, venues to study. Because once you... When you take something that it was so groundbreaking, like stem cell research, and move it out of the country, you move all the brains that can handle that type of shit out of the country as well. So it's not just about the current technology that you're turning your nose up at. You're turning your nose up at the scientists that can provide the knowledge and research that you need to do not only stem cell research, but you know, trying to beat cancer or get rid of uh, virally transmitted diseases, or any number of other things, uh, ALS, what have you. Yep. And yeah, exactly. That's one of the things that I, I, you know, I was like, so what are you working on right now? And he's, he's working on cholera, and he's like, I'm afraid that, and he works at Wayne State, mm-hmm. you know, in, in their labs, and he's like, w- we all were sitting around the day after the election going, are we going to have a job come January? Are we going to be downsized out of existence? Right. You know, I mean, and this isn't something, this isn't some, 
you know, oh, we're trying to invent Tang. This is, you know, we're trying to save lives. And we're trying to, you know, understand how things work so we, before things get out of control, because we have such a habit. And I asked him, I said, so basically you're trying to be proactive instead of reactive. And he goes, that's what is science at its best should do. Mm -hmm. It should wait until, you know, something comes along and leaves a path of destruction and then treat the path of destruction. Right. No, we should stop it from destroying in the first place. Right. And it, that's what he's afraid that we've lost sight of as a country. And I, I can only, this is someone who's a year away from his PhD. I can only agree with the man. Yes, because look at the presence that's already been set with NAFTA. Let's not talk about whether it was good or bad anymore. It's happened. And with it, manufacturing in the way that it happened in the world changed. And it can't change back. That's why the jobs aren't coming back to the U.S., the manufacturing jobs. It's too late. And, and we're changing the way that we handle just the, the, just the way, again, going back to the words that are said. Even if you don't want to believe that a government or a person in power has that much power to control policy or make definitive change, the words matter. And when you talk about science and, and facts in dismissive ways, we are not a culture that is open to uh, people in this world. We used to be the place where you would want to come and do your research, right? Yeah. It's, this was where all the, best, just, all the best schools were and all the best research labs to work in, and this is where we were solving real problems and sending people into space and curing diseases. And we don't we no longer uh, seem to believe in science as a nation anymore. And so why would a scientist come to us? Exactly. They come to but, us. It used to be they came to us, they got educated, and they stayed. Now right. it's more of they come, they get their education, and they leave. And the scary thing is, and he brought this up, is he goes, I'm afraid they're going to stop coming here for education because it won't be worth a shit. It'll be just like... Yeah. If a guy gets a doctorate in, in, in a third world country and he comes here, guess what? You're, you're now qualified to drive a cab because right. these are our standards. Well, if become, our standards fall, along with manufacturing, we become literally an entire country that is a service industry. And that's it. We'll become the new Poland. When people say, I'm going, I'm going abroad to study. Where to? America. <laughs> American college. I, That's funny. Tell me another good one. Fifty years. Yeah. No. Hey, I'm we're working on. Hey, all right. We're working on these submarines with screen doors. All right. <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. Rich, like, Rich, all the I old Pol you they'll take all the old Polish jokes and just make them into American jokes. Rich, I also felt you kind of buried the lead with your friend. It's 2016. We're still working on cholera. Uh, across the world, yeah. 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 He's working on different, I mean, it's not, I, look, first of all, I told him, I said, look, my little plea brain isn't going to understand all the, the ways you're working on it. And he's like, well, I'm working on it at a micro level and this and that. And I'm like, oh boy. And that's dumbing it down. And I'm like, I don't, I, I uh, thank you're God like, you're listen. a music, thank God you're a musician and a former hockey player or else I would have right. no common ground. With you. I heard the word cholera, so that's the one I repeated. I had an awesome time in my 20s. You're going to have to speak slower. Yes, and he was around for, to witness it. And I'm like, I kind of, I wonder if me and my friends were kind of the uh, cautionary tale for you. That's so why I put the drum set down and went to U of M. Right. So, so we've already seen, we saw Bush kind of cause a, a, a brain drain kick off a brain drain. Uh, uh, Clinton kicked off a, a manufacturing drain. I think Trump is just kicking off a culture drain in this country. Yay. And, Hooray. And I, from the result, you can't say that these things don't matter. I'm not trying to be argumentative and saying that, you know, that these presidents are, have the power to make these sweeping changes in this nation. It's the things that they do that spread across the world and come back to roost even decades later. 
you it's can, funny. You said, if, if you drop oh, a ahead, pebble, Rich. if you drop a pebble into a body of water, yeah, it yeah, doesn't yeah. just drop straight in, and, and and that's it. There's a there's splash and there's ripple effect. It's, and now that we have information that travels everywhere across the world instantaneously and constantly, we have many millions of more ripples, and they never die out. Mm-hmm. That shit's out there forever. One of the things that he brought up that, and I doubt he's listening, but if he is, Paul, thanks for the conversation tonight. It, it was some of it, most of it was over my head, but I appreciate it anyways. One of the things he brought up, as he said, is him as a scientist, he deals in facts. And he doesn't care what side of a political spectrum, what side of your feelings, whatever the facts fall on. If he researches something and the facts point to, to A, then he goes, okay, these are the facts as best as we understand them at this point. And then they test A to make sure the facts hold up. We don't even bother doing that as a country anymore. We no, just go, how do you feel about this? We hear, and, we hear B, and B feels right, so we exactly. choose to believe it. <laughs> and so guys, someone like him, it's terrifying. And I can understand coming, just not even being that, put in his shoes, but it's like he might... It, by the time he's 60, 70, he might have a hard time even finding intellectual equals coming out of college at that point for him. But right, he's going to move out of the country just to get a teaching job. Exactly. He, he must have enjoyed John Oliver's show on Sunday. I forgot did to you, ask him if he watched John Oliver. He's a, he's a huge South Park fan, so there you go. <laughs> was it, did either of you guys see that? Or he just he yes, torched yeah, the, the media finale. about fact-checking? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's great. Oh, the uh, w- well, shit. I think what, they should what? show it in journalism classes in college. That's how great I think it was. I think it was. Is it Miriam Webster that that announces the the word of the year towards the end of the year? One of the the big dictionaries. I believe so. Yeah. But the, the word of the year, regardless, according to somebody's dictionary, some group of people, and I can't argue with this. The word of the year is post truth. Certainly a word that I read a lot this year that I don't know if I've ever read prior in reference to we are living in a post-truth society. I'm just now hearing it, but I've been, I've been saying post-fact for a little bit now, so I oh, guess they're the, in the same uh, realm. Maybe, no, you, you, I think you're right and I'm incorrect. It was post-fact, maybe? Well, didn't we also talk about a, a few podcasts, maybe back in the time when we uh, relaunched on how... Uh, I'm, and we, I'm not making this shit up. I'm saying it again. Well, I'm bringing it up again that the 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 phrase "fact based" has become a pejorative. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is insane to me. Oh, here we go. Post truth named 2016 Word of the Year by Oxford Dictionaries. Also, Stephen Colbert says it's just a rip off of truthiness. <laughs> uh no, I think it's really the next step. Like truthiness is. I'm going to play with the facts and only present the ones that seem to prove my argument. Post truth is AKA not the giving lie a of fuck. omission. Bull, is it bald face? Bold face? What? Some sort of bald face lie. Yeah, what kind of lying do people do with their faces? Whatever. That, I grew up with bold face. Bold face liar. I always had a bald uh, face liar. Maybe seaside west thing. I don't know. I don't know, but bold face makes more sense. I think it's, but it also sounds like, you know, a style of font, right? <laughs> but, but yeah, post-truth is just a flat out, I'm going to <laughs> just outright lie and not give a fuck and nobody's going to call me on it because we've got to report both sides. I think there's, I mean, listen, there's a, this whole nonsense about Facebook and how fake news ruined the election it's bullshit, man. Uh, there's always going to be people no. out there spouting lies, and there's people that are willing to believe them. And uh, it's the fact people that people being mainstream, dumb lost the election. The, the, it wasn't Facebook, and it it wasn't the these fake news stories that people were seeing on their Facebook page. It was the shit that they were watching on CNN yeah. and reading in the in the Times or any given newspaper that's still around that decided not to just call him on his shit 
and instead still try and present this image that they're fair and balanced. I don't even, look, fair and balanced, what the fuck does that mean? You tell the truth as you see it. That's all anyone can really do. All right. But come on, Rick, are you going to sit here and talk about how Donald Trump wasn't torched for the last two years every fucking day by the media? Because he was. Except for Fox, every news outlet was fucking beating that guy with a fucking bamboo rod. But they were also having their cake and eating it, too, because they knew that he is the human embodiment of if it bleeds, it leads Mm -hmm. with a dash of sex cells thrown in so they could chastise him and goof on him and report on stories with, you know, with a roll of their eyes. But they also knew that if they didn't have those stories and the next news station did, the next news station was going to get better ratings. It's, it's, it, it's a vicious circle. And that's what media has become. It's entertainment. It's, it, it's poly- First of all, politics is entertainment. I understand a lot of people disagree with me when I say that's not a good thing. But I really don't believe it's a good thing. Politics, you should not look at politics like sports. You're rooting for a team just because you were born near them. You're rooting for a side just because your parents handed it down or someone at a pulpit. That's the way I grew up. That's the way I'm going to be. Exactly. Politics and views should evolve and change over time. They should not be static. Yes. And unfortunately... You can't change your mind. This is America. That's flip-flop. Yes, I know. And I don't, I gotta hate that fucking term. I hated that term before I fucking ever heard of it. In, Selling in, out. We've but got- it's just, I don't know, once again, where truth is going to come from. Because even, even the news, the so-called alternative news sites and sources, non-mainstream news sources, everybody has a slant these days and the reason they do is because it's okay in the eyes of the majority of the of their consumers when i took fucking journalism class in high school one of the first things you're taught is there's not supposed to be any slant apparently that is out the fucking window now i missed that day of journalism class there's actually been quite a vibrant debate in between a lot of journalists more recently about whether it's even possible for humans to report without bias. We are born with bias. I hear, that sounds like an excuse to me. You can write down what happened, you can write down who, what, when, where, and why without any bias. Uh, maybe not why. Listen, maybe not why. I'll, I'll give you why. Why could have some bias in it. There's always But bi- you can write down who, what, when, and where without any bias. Look, uh, bias is anything and everything, right? Bias is uh, the murder of the young girl was horrible. That's bias. How can you say it's horrible? Maybe there was somebody that thought that she was a horrible cunt and is glad to see her gone. He has a bias in reporting that, and it just so happens that that bias fits in line with almost every other person on the fucking planet. But when, But there's other situations where your bias, you don't even see it. And the way that you enunciate things, the way that you choose certain words, or even what you choose to, uh, what type of, of information you choose to seek out, is all bias. There's no such thing as, as bias free. Now, I don't, I'm not saying that that makes uh, all journalism free game. And it's all, it all should be opinion-based. There's certainly something to be said for striving to be as unbiased as possible. Well, so then I'll parse, I'll parse some language here for you. Then you were supposed to write with the least amount of bias as possible. The, or, sorry, the most objective. You're supposed to write the yes. most objective as you can. Right. Well, I think, can we, and I know that we're, at this point, we're almost arguing semantics. But there's a difference between bias and a slant, in my opinion. A bias is... Well, a slant, is, a slant is merely a bias that is obvious to the reader. Exactly. And I think that that is what we have a lot more in, in mm-hmm. news and media 
than we did 50 years ago, 40 well, years ago. See, but I, I don't agree. I think it's the, it was the news outlets that chose to do their best to retain a, a balanced forum that served their readers the least. Because when you're talking about, I don't know. I can't even think of a good example here. But um, yeah, my thoughts gone off the rails. <laughs> I've always thought Fox's slogan right. should be because there aren't any other Republican news outlets. Right. There weren't. I mean, that's what you're, that's what they're really saying with fair and balanced. Well, okay. I, we noticed it during the election, during our live cast. It was obviously Fox is slanted to the right. Obviously, MSNBC is slanted to the left, and CNN was was was. I, while I will, they were trying hard. So admit, hard. Yes, and I will wholeheartedly admit that CNN if you could poll everybody anonymously, that they slant more to the left than the right. But that's just the nature of the media, especially Hollywood, et cetera, et cetera, stuff like that. Just pop culture, I guess. However, CNN was trying to play it so safe and not get ahead of themselves. And I can't think of... The last time I saw a pre, watching the presidential election returns coming in, that it was like that, because everybody, like I, I, and I'm not really getting across what I'm, I'm in my head vocally here. So give me work it out for a second. I guess what I'm saying is, I don't know if it was shock on their part that it was as close as it was. I don't know if they it was a it was a conscious decision to go look go out there. Don't start calling states. I mean, the Detroit News called Michigan for Hillary at what eight oh five? It's a free press, but yes. yeah, they free were very press, conservative yes. in their uh, in the way they were calling the election. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. How do you think that was going down in the CNN newsroom? Oh shit! It looks like Donald Trump's going to win. Wait, wait. All right, let's let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Let's just <laughs> yeah. Maybe there's a little bit of that going on. And part part of me thinks okay. That's because they've learned the lessons of 2000. But then another part of me thinks they know that Fox has the the right the hardcore right wingers wrapped up. MSNBC has the hardcore left wingers ha- wrapped up, and there's a whole lot of people who are more moderate, who aren't as extreme to either side of the political spectrum, and they were just trying to walk the straight and narrow and, and walk that line. Now, whether they succeeded maybe they or not, maybe they didn't want to be the first person to the first station to call uh, Trump as president. Maybe all the news directors were on a conference call, going, "All right, we're flipping coins. Someone's got to be the first <laughs> one to call this guy we're gonna, president." We're going to draw straws. Whoever gets to, <laughs> yeah, whoever gets fucked has to announce it. Hey, here's uh, something a little lighter. As long as we're still talking about politics, Mike Pence got booed. At a performance of Hamilton today. This is great news. Um, I don't. Did you guys hear about this one? No, I'm just amused that he was at a performance of Hamilton. Yeah, you know, trying to get some culture there. Put the, the, man, the man currently most hated by the gays going to the theater. I mean, going to like, going to a Tony Award winning show. <laughs> right. Like you're a you're a blood and crypt territory, son. Like, <laughs> you're lucky that all you got is booed. But can we stop acting like a bunch of babies? Like can, oh, yeah. can't the guy can 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 he not go out? Is he is Mike Pence oh, now no. not allowed to go to the theater anymore? Uh no. I don't Without think getting he is. a whole bunch of shit from people? Yeah, absolutely. That's I, I, that's something that I don't know if it's political in nature, but it's just it is uh, on on social media since the election. There are just groups of people that are that are my friends and and, and acquaintances that if you support Trump, 
if you even go and eh, give them a chance or you just go, I don't really care who won. It's not going to affect me. You are persona non grata to them. That is it. You support racism, homophobia, xenophobia. You support genocide. And that's all there is to it. It's all, you can, there's no talking to them. There's no trying to say, look, How I voted for of them. Do they even realize that? Well, do they do they do they do they have no sense of irony or no? I, like, I've, I've, I've said that for weeks now. No sense people. of irony. That's what I don't get about all these protesters and all these people. The, the giant butthurt, which has gone, gone throughout the country in the last week and a half, is a lot of these people. And I'm in Portland right now. You don't see. You've become the other side. You you have become exactly what you are protesting against. You have the exact same amount of intolerance. You are spewing the exact same amount of ignorance. Just because you believe it doesn't mean it isn't ignorant. Doesn't mean it isn't intolerance. One one of the things I saw that was posted by a friend of mine that kind of it bothered me, but at this point. It's not worth the argument <laughs> because I don't want to get thrown in with the Trump supporters because I'm not. But then again, I don't want to get thrown in with the Hillary supporters because I'm not. But it's just I saw it and it bothered me. It was basically you have no right to, to defend a vote for Trump on any level or any one issue. You, that no matter what you say, you are turning a blind eye towards all, like I said, racism, homophobia, et cetera, et cetera. I don't care if you wanted to shake the system up. I don't care if you wanted an outsider. I don't care if you voted your pocketbook. I don't care if you voted for your religion and it's Christianity or whatever. This is, you have no, that is all immaterial. Why? Because I say so. And if you Flip argue that with around. me, if that came from the other side, you would be enraged. And then he went on to say, and you Trump supporters who've been crying for the last week about we need to respect our president. You didn't do it for eight years. We're just getting started. And I'm like, so now we're in a battle of who can be petty. Yep. The most. Well, yep. there's kind of two different things there for me. And I actually see it from from two different sides. If you're talking about fellow citizens, uh, yeah, your your talk, your your language is just as corrosive as the other side's is, and what and there is there's a lot to be said for reaching out to these people that we may be believing to be uh, racist or homophobic or xenophobic, but. When it comes to the president, that's where your anger and frustration should be directed, in my opinion. And I'm not talking about protests per se, or uh, anything that might be going out in, on in Seattle or Portland or wherever right now. Um, I'm just talking about there. There should be less of that anger directed to your fellow citizen who voted for uh, for Trump and more of it at Trump himself. I understand that that person that you're mad at put is responsible for putting that freak in office. But now it's your responsibility to do what you can to keep that person, that, uh, to keep Trump in check and to make sure that we make more responsible decisions going forward. And none of that is gained by pointing at the, fi the finger at a group of people and prejudging them all as one thing, regardless of whether you're factually correct or not. It does no good. It moves nobody forward. No, no I, it, it produces a stalemate because then you have two people who dug their heels in because they're not going to give an inch to the other side. Mm -hmm. And, and call, oh, I'm sorry, call me grandpa, but I think if you didn't vote and you're protesting, now there's a difference between not liking the result in protesting, but you know, I think if you didn't vote and you're protesting, shut up. Yeah. Hey, if you didn't vote 
If you voted and you're protesting that vote publicly, that is your right. If, yes. If you didn't vote and you are protesting, well, that's still your right. But we should know that you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah, like, to me, we, you're an idiot. Because like, I, I heard a statistic this week. 62% of the people that got arrested in Portland didn't vote. Right. Like, to me, that's, okay, curious, we're done here. I'd be, I was definitely curious about that number. I guess the, the skeptic in me, without ever seeing any report like this, just went, I wonder how many of those people voted. And uh, cause it didn't look like the type of people that they were talking about that turned out in big numbers, did it? Exactly. Right? Well, it All like, these statistics like- that we heard on the news of, like, who stayed home? Who stayed home in this election? Younger uh, millennials. Millennials stayed it home. It looked like drugs. a bunch of people who don't have a full time job. Because yeah. one of the first things I thought about when I saw that is like, man, this is a you. This is a bunch of people who don't have shit to do. Right. I got a job. I got bills to pay. And now who's like, protesting? Wait a minute, millennials. Hmm. Yes. I told you, man. The snake has started eating its tail. I think in the last couple of years here. And I did have, well, and I did have that thought this week. That is Rome on fire. Uh, I, I think perhaps yeah. <laughs> we have started to see the first initial sparks. That's what I'm telling you. Of uh, Rome well, starting to burn if we, here. If we allow things, Trump to close things. ourselves off from the world, then this is the end of days for this nation. One of the one of the things that I think has come out of this election that's really, if. If you're like me and, and, and have a certain viewpoint in the world, to me, this is the most, one of the most terrifying things come out of this election is I'm watching people on the left and the right go, I'm afraid, and whether my fear is based in fact or it's, it's irrational, doesn't matter. You have no right to question my fear. And on the, on the, on the right, it's fear of... You know, let's get these Muslims, round them up. Let's let's register them. Let's get these Mexicans out of here. They're taking our jobs. And on the left, it's uh, he's going to start internment camps for gay people and all this. And I knew where it was going to go. And it's 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 just the tip of the iceberg. But I'm seeing this more and more. And Maybe. it's gone to it's gone to if you're not one of us, you don't have a right to question my fear. Okay. Well, if you're afraid of the boogeyman at 30 years old and you just so happen to be gay, just because I call your fear irrational doesn't mean I hate you because you're gay. All right. If you think that he's going to round you up and put you into gas chambers in the next four years and that this country, your friends, your family are going to stand by and let it happen. Come on, dude. We, but you can't say that. And if you think that Muslims, I mean, it's are, at least going to take eight years. All right? And if you think Muslims are going to like, like Red Dawn style invade this country and take over, come the fuck on also. Yeah. But but they go. I'm afraid of it, and my fear is valid because it's fear, and I say so, and you have oh, no right to oh, question it. Yeah, I, the whole, I'm not afraid whole so camp- much of President Trump as I'm afraid of how I'm afraid of us. That's what I'm afraid of. I think. A free pass to be ignorant won a week and a half ago, and it's just going to get worse. And it's on both sides. Well, the, f- the fear was what this campaign was r- based on. It, Trump talked about fear of minorities, fear of losing your position in this country and the respect that you deserve as, I don't know, a white person, I guess. And Hillary ran on the fear of what Donald would do if he got into office. Which is really not a good stance to. to Apparently, have. we weren't but, that scared. But now we're going back. Like, let's, look, the election is done. Let's talk about things going. Actually, let's just talk about lighter stuff for a little while. There's other well, shit. the point, of, the point of, shit going on in the world. The thing I was just trying to say is, apparently, none of us listened, or actually, not none of us, but not enough of us listened to Bill Hicks back in the day when he said, you know. The eyes of love tell you to do this, and the eyes of fear tell you to buy more guns and, and lock yourselves away from your neighbors and be afraid of everybody and everything. Apparently, that's just our natural state. So, 
that's I don't know. I thought we had evolved beyond that. That's what that's what scared me the most. So hey, yeah, I'm you done. know what I'm does done. evolve? Pokemon. <laughs> Sun and Moon came out today. Should I just hang up now? Or <laughs> yeah, I hit. Go ahead, Aaron. This is all you. No, I, have... I don't play this shit. I don't know. It's just that my kids were really excited about it. So fucking excited that I what I traded in enough games because they were offering this like insane amount of credit at, for like some of it was like the last generation of Pokemon games that they were mm-hmm. still offering like twenty two dollars for this cartridge plus forty percent more if you trade towards the the Pokemon. The new one? Oh, there's one thing insane. I know about Pokemon so is that the people that collect that shit, there's always a market, even for the two, three oh, generations oh, yeah. ago, that's, shit that's out there. Apparently so, because I traded in four games and got two brand new ones and still had $10 credit to spend however I saw, saw fit. And so, yeah, I pre-ordered the, the Sun and Moon for my kids and actually went to the, the midnight release. I wasn't going to. It was like... A, because I, I, I have my kids on the weekend, but then I realized, well, I'm going to go get them after work, and I want to have to drive back to this side of town just to pick up the the game first. And plus, it's a midnight release, so they might damn well sell out and tell me I have to wait a week for another shipment to come in because there was a significant line there waiting for this game. I, st- I stood there in line feeling like a narc. Uh <laughs> The only person over 40, I think, that didn't drive somebody else. And I swear it's for my kids. Really? See, that's kind of shocking because I have a a friend who live Facebook live broadcasted him at, at the midnight release. Yeah. And he's well past 35. Yeah, I'm not saying that they're not. Oh, well, you, you, you still know virgins at your age, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was coming. I, yeah, definitely the, they're out there. But, you know, it's it, the uh, the millennials. There more. I bet you there's more millennials that turned out for Sun and Moon than for the, uh, the election. Screw Muslims and Mexicans. Can we round up millennials? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Millennial tournament camps, all we need is just make sure there's Wi-Fi. All right, you just luring them in. You can make them look like their parents' basement. Right. Put a, po- put a Pokemon Go gym. That's what. <laughs> that's what. That- <laughs> in the middle of the Auschwitz for. Uh, the <laughs> they'll they'll walk in voluntarily. You won't have to run that's them what, up. That's what know, Kanye right? Kanye's going to run on his platform and for 2020 is going to be millennials suck. I know. I'm one of them. I suck. <laughs> Let's get us out of here. In the next four years, next. In the next four years, I promise I will leave this country and I will take as many millennials with me as possible. Yeah, Rich, I don't know if you ever watched his. I think it was a speech from last year, where Kanye just went on and on at one of the MTV Music Awards. He's a year older than me, Rich. He was talking about he's a millennial. Oh yeah, we're millennials, bro. That was where all the bros <laughs> born, came born from. Born in 1978. No, you're not. He dropped like <laughs> 40 bros in one in, in one speech, <laughs> one five-minute speech. That's kind of impressive. Yeah. And, and I know people that drop that, that word, every other word. So, hey. and, and he had every style as well. Bro oh, and bro. A, well, no, no, there's no, no. There's a screaming the, bro. There's there like was, a mellow bro. They were all like, bra. Just a regular bro. Right. They were all technically bras. There were no O's in there. But there was the sad, the happy... The uh, anguished, the excited. <laughs> we cut them all up. We use them on the Weedsman. Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I actually made a little beat out of just Kanye saying, brah. <laughs> that should be our new intro and outro right there. Yeah, yeah maybe. I'll dig that up. I we, that no, no, yeah, I also have the, he, uh, he made a beat, and then I, I fired up the drum machine. It was live. It's live remix. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. I played a little bit on the Weedsman. <laughs> I can dig that up. Well, you know, I got to say, you, you, mm-hmm. you brought it up yes, about but, waiting in line at a midnight release for Pokemon. Yeah. All right. So I, I went back it. and I listened to my the Joe Rogan, Doug Stanhope, Bill Burr, 
what they called the end of the world podcast that they did the night of the election. And at one point, they did it at the comedy store in L.A., which is kind of like the mecca of comedy in the U.S. At one point, they had a, just a rotating group of comedians coming up, and they'd do like, you know, 30 minutes, and then they'd, you know, sit on the panel and talk, and then they go. And one comedian come up, I cannot remember her name, but she come up and uh, got into an argument with Bill Burr, and one of the things she brought up was she's tired of all these, these, uh, what'd she call them? Millennial man babies, I think is what she said. Yeah. And Bill Burr's like, okay, but I agree with you, but I think we agree for different reasons. Go ahead with your reasons. And she was like, well, they just want to play video games, and 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 it, they're happy with just looking at porn instead of going to a bar and trying to pick up a woman and talk to a woman, and they'd rather just stay home and watch Netflix. And, I, and I'm like, okay, so basically you're talking about millennials, am I correct? Because hasn't every news outlet reported in the last year or so about how millennials are having less sex they go out less than generations before them at the same age etc etc yeah oh this is this would be where i play doug stanhope again no interest in driving <laughs> talking about the right worst away. generation ever was it adam carolla says he's got a nephew that's like 19 and has no interest in getting a driver's license yeah i cannot believe the amount of friends i've had who I've worked with over the last six years who are well into their 20s. Now, I'm talking closer to 30 than 20 who still don't have licenses, and they don't care. I was in driver's ed on my 15th birthday. I was at the Secretary of State on my 16th birthday. Exactly. I don't understand it either because, you know, it's the the freedom that it represents, right? But they don't feel like they're caged in their bedroom anymore either. You know, it might... My kid, my son, when he is, doesn't do his homework, he is punished not by going to his room because he has all his shit there. He can go wherever he wants. He just can't have any of his electronics. That's how he's punished. And it makes and he sense. Wander, he, does he wander around looking like an extra from The Walking Dead? Like, what, what do I do? <laughs> I don't know what, what I do. do. I have to talk right. to people. He what re- is this? He reads a book. Human interaction. He reads a book like he just like dug it up, like it's an artifact that he found. <laughs> like, oh, what is this? <laughs> no, I, I shouldn't say that. He actually does read quite a lot. He plays a lot of video games and all that shit too. But he, I'm proud to say, both my kids are readers. Dictionary Online calls this a tome. <laughs> Hey. Well, I just I, I just thought it was funny because I, I can I've been to one midnight release for a video game. That was, it was my last first. year. It was last year around this time, and uh, it was when I picked up my Xbox One. Just so happened, the night that the the version of Xbox One I picked up come out was it was the Fallout Four version, and I was like, I got three days off. I'm not wasting it. You know, God damn it, I I, I don't drink anymore. I don't fucking really smoke weed that much. I don't have anything that I can just fucking binge on. And I need that as an addict. So I'm going to go pick this thing up at midnight. Holy shit. That's when I realized how much different the online community is from the real world community. Yeah. (laughs) Because I was like, these are people I would probably totally get along with online, having, you know, back and forth with. They see me in person and they're like, Dude, who let dad in here? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, just like you said, I'm, I'm standing there like, oh, God. At least it wasn't Pokemon, because then I, then I really would look like a fucking child molester. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys are telling me that I have been to more midnight video game releases than both of you combined? Yeah. Oh, that was my first one. I don't know. I never, I never know you've been to one. Yeah. I... I used to for three years. I was I went to the one for Madden, and I did a couple of uh, Call of Duties. Now, in my defense, I used to work till fucking eleven or twelve every Monday, and these bitches would come out on Tuesday, so I would just mm-hmm. hit up Meyer on my way home and pick these up. There you go. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't like a. Like no, it wasn't, a you know, it wasn't like I planned it and we set up a tent. And no, it wasn't <laughs> none of that. I mean, it was it like, there. oh, hey, Madden comes out in 10 minutes. I'm going to hit up Meyer. They got their shit together with this stuff now. I mean, I, I showed up at quarter to midnight. There was a decent line. It doubled in the time that I was waiting there in 15 minutes. 
but they got through it quick. Everyone had either pre-ordered or some of them had even come a little bit earlier and just got it, uh, got their cashed out receipt so they just get it stamped when they pick up their game. Yeah, and that's what they did me. Yeah, I, I was. Ooh, the, I so was, I got I got some some gamer cred on you. I went when you still had to wait for them to roll the shit out. Yeah, everyone had to get in line, <laughs> and you still had to wait for the guy to roll the shelf out at fucking eleven fifty nine. Yeah, <laughs> I, the, it's a very slick procedure. I was in and out of there in forty five minutes. For the number of people that they went through, uh, they did a bang up job. Yeah, I, I I'm kind of sh- I have to I'm kind of shocked, Chris. Who did I mean? Have you ever been to a midnight release for an album? Oh, plus yeah, so oh, many, lots of them. Well, I worked at a record store too, but so that not doesn't only count. I, if you're working, that doesn't count. Come on. Yeah, oh, I did midnight. No, I didn't. Work. I did a midnight release for ICP. Kids were lined up for, and they were late. Kids, so many kids were there for ICP. Were like, oh my god, I can't believe how big these fucking jerkwads are getting. Like these are the guys it. that were coming in and selling their own tapes to us, not in makeup or anything, and going. Well, they would they would come back and go like, oh, "How's that uh, ICP stuff doing? Is that pretty cool? Is that solid?" And we're like, "Dude, we know who you are. Like, stop asking about your own record, or just come <laughs> out and ask us if you want to know." <laughs> like, well, I, 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 Rock, I told oh, Rock of okay. Ages was like that about yeah. It, Rock of Ages used to be like that. It, you'd drive by and go, why the fuck is there a bunch of people in clown? My mom would do this. There's a bunch of people in clown makeup by that record store you go to. What's going on? I'm like, <laughs> I it's just too much that, to explain, Mom. <laughs> I announced on the PA to everyone that was waiting that uh, not to worry that the clown copter had just landed on the roof and they will be here momentarily. <laughs> I'm surprised they didn't lynch you, dude. <laughs> you know what? They are they're very serious about their their music and the band ICP themselves, but generally speaking, uh, one of the easiest groups to get along with. Hey, and if it wasn't if it wasn't I, for Juggalos, we wouldn't have probably one of the greatest episodes of Workaholics ever <laughs> either. <laughs> like Juggalos are not bad people, man. There are more skeevy ravers out there, from my experience, than there are juggalos. There's some. Did you go to Did you go to school with any juggalos? Because I did. Yeah. And uh, say, no, I'll, no, no, no. That was I, not. I'll call them fifty fifty on being all right. Yeah, juggalos pretty much came along, probably right after I graduated, because I graduated ninety four. So I'm probably say late ninety four, ninety five is when I started hearing a lot more about juggalos. So. Some juggalos are decent people, and some juggalos are giant pieces of shit. Right. <laughs> Just, it's, I said it. Hey, 50 50. Chris, yeah, at, Chris, no, Chris just, at ChristopherMedia.net. You can, you can forward it there. Well, right. <laughs> well, in that respect, then, they're cutting even with the rest of the population, so they're all right people, right? It's, it's, I always default to George Carlin's uh, philosophy about kids, <laughs> just like everybody else. A few winners. A whole lot of losers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, but let's really let's really let's really look at this. Yeah. They they aren't into fat shaming. I mean, yeah. their song Super Balls, ain't no bitch too fat, ain't <laughs> no bitch too whack. Right. So they're you know, they're they're body positive. Yes. Um they're <laughs> they're, they're 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 certainly not into sh- slut shaming either, right? Nope, nope. And they're spiritual. Yeah. Uh because the whole Joker's card thing, I never figured out how that all worked together, but whatever. I, I, yeah, I know that it's in the end it was supposed to tie in heaven and hell and all this. Um, they're for the working class, um, the extreme working class. They're small businessmen. They're for the small businessmen. Yes, yes, they are. They employ locally because we used to, uh, uh, used to work at a place that made their T-shirts for their tours. A screen printing shop, and I used to have to deliver their products to their to warehouse over off of uh, hey, Pontiac Trail. Wait a minute, you might want to stop there. If Trump hears this, he might put him in the cabinet. What's that? Are we, are we, <laughs> does this conversation end at Shaggy Two Dope Twenty Twenty? Yeah, or? That's what I'm thinking too. <laughs> hey, and would, you know, and would Two Dope first, automatically first, have to be vice it. president? This is no comment section. First, we're shouting it. All first. right. <laughs> Instead of instead of instead of a national convention, they just have 
the gathering of the juggalos. And instead of, you know, chanting like, you know, make America great again, it's just whoop, whoop, yeah, <laughs> whoop, whoop. <laughs> right. In 2020, it's either going to be, uh, it's going to be Kanye versus uh, Shaggy and Two Dope. And we're just, be gonna, we're going to go, oh my God, remember when we chastised the millennials for not voting? <laughs> <laughs> what if they vote this time? <laughs> uh, what well, you know what? It's- if that became our 2020 election after this election, it wouldn't surprise me if our election just devolves into a giant American fucking idol contest. <laughs> this is an 800 number. Ryan Seacrest hosts it. Uh, <laughs> At the end of the, after, you know, the, the concession speech and the acceptance speech, Seacrest, out. <laughs> hey, speaking of hosting things, before we wrap up, can we talk, did, did we see the Chappelle Saturday Night oh, Live? Yeah, you know what? I did. I didn't. I I didn't see all of it. I was able to between what was posted on SNL's YouTube site and on their website, which were different clips. Interestingly, I believe I saw everything except for maybe a couple clips and the second Tribe Called Quest performance. But yeah, well, can we talk about? Can we talk about the beginning? You want to talk about his monologue? I thought it was pretty great. Well, I met before the monologue, the very beginning, the cold open. What do you guys think? I thought for about 20 seconds that this bitch is crazy and why would they have her dressed up as a character performing this song? And then I forgot about it and really enjoyed her performance and I even got a little misty-eyed. And See, I... It's for- kind of apropos. I, I, I'm pretty much the complete opposite of you. <laughs> for about the I first thought, 30 seconds, I thought, this was cool. And then I was like, for what just happened? This is a, yeah. I thought they whiffed. I thought it was a swing and I, a miss. Yeah, see, I completely I thought they, disagree. I, I thought with the things that leading up to that show, they've had, they, they, they've had way better and could have done way better. No, the only I, thing I thought of plausibly is Baldwin pulled out on like Friday night. <laughs> I thought it was a transcendent moment for television. I and it showed what a show like Saturday Night Live can do. It, that was a brave choice for a comedy show. I just thought it smacked of last minute. Like for, that's really what I thought. Like Baldwin must have called on Friday at noon. Like ah, I don't want to do Trump anymore. Shit, what are we gonna do? Uh, K. McKinnon, you know how to play piano and sing? Let's do this. You realize all this material is written on Tuesday of that week. Like you had, you're criticizing a show that has this like frantic production rate as being too last minute, and it's supposed to come off yeah, more but, like improv. But, but they also proved that they can turn on a fucking dime with the the one with grabbing by the pussy. And that I should think happen they did less than twenty four hours. And I argue that before they aired a, that show, this is an occasion they, where they did. They, I mean, I you can't. And Leonard Cohen died on Thursday. Right. Because we were recording when it happened. Clearly this wasn't planned. They weren't, she wasn't like, oh, this is the song that uh, really wraps up Hillary's campaign. And then while she's practicing it, gets the news that Leonard Cohen dies. It was, it had to have, it was all last minute, clearly. But I thought it came together perfectly. And I just, I just think there were stronger efforts in their cold opens this year. Mm. And I, I, I think it was a swing and a miss, man. I, I, can't I, mean, believe, I get what they I were trying to do. I believe how opposite we are on this because I think that is one of the strongest openings that I've seen on that show. I, I get what they were trying to do. I just think I, th- I think they could like hey, D minus hey, for effort. Hey, you know what? I well, I say A for effort. I mean, not because that was a bold move. The balls on uh, on Kate McKinnon to. To even try and do that, and try and try and pull that off, but I think it showed their ass a little bit too, because I think until that point they had done a good job in the selection of skewering both of them, of of getting their jabs in at both sides. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I think it showed their ass a little bit. Well, they're not, there's... They're not a news program, though. It's yeah, I mean, I'll give them. you that. <laughs> They had to take shots during the election, <clears throat> but I mean, let's be honest. It pretty much, <laughs> it did right itself. Have you seen any cast members 
or heard any cast members interviewed, you know that they they were leaning towards the left. And even the ones who probably are apolitical, if they are, if there are any, were just like, of course she's going to win. Who the fuck's yeah. going to vote for Donald Trump? Well, uh, and and in, <laughs> it, speaking of being in the middle, I didn't take what, what I, Chris, what you said. I didn't feel that. I didn't feel what Aaron, you said. I was just like, I didn't know she could sing like that. Okay. <laughs> and that was the end of it. <laughs> That's not bad I just on the didn't piano care. either. Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, and believe me, for the first 10 seconds of that performance, I was looking for any hint that that was pre-recorded. I was or, too, but you could tell. Watch her eyes. Yeah. When she goes for chord changes and her eyes dart over real quick. Yeah, you, you can tell what uh, she's fucking playing that shit. Especially if but you're a musician yourself, you're like yeah. you know that. Yeah, yeah. It's Mandy was asking me, is she playing? I was like, yeah. It's just from being in jazz ensembles and shit. Yeah. I could just, I could tell from the, I could tell from the shoulders. It's like, yes, she's playing. Yeah, she's not doing what people do when they fake playing. When people fake playing piano. They're fucking. Their hands are all spread apart and their shoulders are all like wide. It's like no. It's like when you're playing piano, like you're fucking like you're almost kind of hunched over that thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like every time I watch a CW show and someone's like, oh, I can find the killer on my computer, and then they type something that fits all into the one row on their keyboard. You know, yeah. They, they never move their fingers from the middle row. I don't know yeah. if you ever yeah. noticed that on TV. At yeah. no time is alt, control, <laughs> shift, pressed. Right. right. Yes. They'll, they'll type just in the center row a lot real quickly and then hit enter. <laughs> You didn't even try to move towards the tab button. (laughs) Oh, well, speaking of speaking of uh, celebrities who play. um, Did you see that Michael J. Fox hopped on stage with Dave Matthews band to do all along the watchtower? What? What he played the tambourine? No, he played guitar. (laughs) The maracas. He played guitar. I had no idea he played for real because I've argued with family members for years that's not him playing Johnny Be Good. No, it's not. I, I play guitar. It's not. Watch this. Watch. Just if you know any twelve bar blues, if you know any scales, watch. He he knew how to fake it. Like he had a, he had enough guitar IQ to look good faking it. But he's not playing. He's no, not. But but now I know how come he could he could fake it because he's a he's a strummer. He's the type of guy who could probably sit down. You know, when he was younger with an acoustic. And strum out some songs, and as long as someone could give some vocals, you'd know what songs they were. I heard he so, was really so he, good at the trem picking. Oh damn it! I'd <laughs> 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 be like, oh, you think he's really good at playing surf and death metal now? <laughs> Fuck Dick Dale. <laughs> <laughs> you got Michael J. Fox on guitar. <laughs> he never heard Pipeline like this. <laughs> hey. Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> hey, check it out—it's Angel of Death, like you've never heard it before. But hey, s- speaking of rock and roll, did you hear that uh, Stone Tall Pilots have a new singer? Oh, did you hear? Yeah. What, did you hear he's what Metro fucking... Times said about it? Because he's from uh, Detroit. Yeah, my personal experience Jeffrey, with the guy—he's a dick. Jeffrey so. Gut. It's Goot. Yeah. Okay. Like I, uh, it, I played yeah, a few shows Boehner. with that guy. Right. <laughs> he, he, Jeff Goot loves him some Jeff Goot. That's my review on that. Yeah. What band was he in, or bands? Uh, it, he was in a band called that I had played when I was in radio called Dry Kill Logic. They had one minor, 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 minor hit, like shit that the riff plays after 7 p.m., like that kind of shit. Okay. And yeah, and he was on the Homeboy show. From then on, he pretty much wrote through most of the 2000s on the fact that he got signed to a band in 2001. And he, whenever I played with him locally, he was a dick. So, I don't know. That's my well, personal opinion. Like, yeah, hey, he's an asshole. Metro Times, uh, their headline for it is, Local Dude Now Singer for Has Been Alt Rockers. That's, that's my, there you go. That's, that's how I feel about it. Like, hey, if this was 1994, all right, or 1996, but it's 2016, and Scott Weiland's dead, and they already had the dude from Lincoln Park. They're just trying to keep their fucking job being Stone Temple Pilots. Okay, I mean, I get it, but <clears throat> what the fuck? What, 
Okay, what is Metro Times going for then? Because they accept advertising from everybody, uh-huh. so they can't claim some sort of hipster higher ground. And, I mean, I've never really heard them talk well about any Detroit act unless they've gotten some indie cred. So, or Skid I, Rock or Eminem? Well, even then they talk shit until they hit a certain fucking level of, of fame. And, oh, yeah, and, then, well, and then it, then it just became non-committal articles about them. Oh, well, not Kid Rock so much. They still take plenty of pot shots at Kid Rock's crowds. Eminem's a little bit more bulletproof. They don't even talk about Eminem's crowd. They talk about Eminem as an MC. This is interesting. This actually ties into what we were talking about earlier. Because in, in this article in the Metro Times that I'm reading about him getting the job in Stone Temple Pilots, they describe there's two videos that they link to. One of them's Hallelujah, right? One of them's Hallelujah. And did you read that? It says, uh, let's see. This kid jumps up on stage towards him after the handsome fellow belts his way through a song that's quickly overtaken. Dolly Parton's song is sung by Whitney Houston in that Bodyguard movie. To the most maudlin thing anyone could ever, could ever sing, ever, the dearly departed Leonard Cohen abomination, Hallelujah. I, I actually looked up abomination just to make sure that the definition hadn't changed on me because <laughs> and it does say a thing that causes disgust or hatred. I, uh, that's like one of the, that's, <laughs> that's, that's one of the greatest Aaron, songs ever. I, Aaron, it just means that the, the uh, dad, I know you're listening. The bullshit has changed, but or no, sorry. The haircuts changed, but the bullshit has stayed the same. It's the Metro Times has always tried to be too cool for the room. Right. And that's exactly what they're doing. Because You're, it's the only song that anyone knows by Leonard Cohen. That song's an abomination. Yeah, and it, you don't, it, yeah it's, everybody likes it, so it sucks. It's that mentality. It's right. the, the punk rockers when Talk we were in high school. You've heard it's Mary that mentality. Ann. Talk yeah. to me when you've heard his shit before his voice broke. Yeah, it's that mentality. So it's, eh. Abomination. I mean, it has... It has been covered way too many times, certainly. And but I heard on uh, what the Drew and Mike podcast in the last couple of weeks, they were talking about any American Idol testant ever has, has done that song. What hallelujah? Yeah, I guess yeah. So. I had I, I do I, I've the only time I've ever watched American Idol is when I've had a buddy and his wife. And we're like, oh, let's watch it. And I'm in the room with them, and I'm just looking at him going, you're a musician. You know better than this. <laughs> <laughs> His wife, the, I give a pass. but You're at the slaughterhouse trying to buy a steak right now. I'm, yeah, I just, uh, I, I, it's, I'm glad not to know about it. I guess it's the, ooh, you're a half-ass elitist hipster. Okay, fine, but I just don't care about singing competitions. All, basically, all around awards for art just make me kind of go, really? Okay. Any episode, any any part of American Idol I've ever watched has been while well, it's been on while I've been in the room. It's been by accident. I take <laughs> oh, it wait, back. it's American. It's American Idol. I got to leave now. I take it back. I take it back. The audition episodes when Drew and Mike would cover them. Oh yeah, I would hear that. I would listen to that and laugh my ass off because it just amazing how many people are delusional and think that they have talent. So, yeah. Oh, I forgot. And um, a guy I knew who I won't name the band, or he might be in two bands at this moment. I'm not going to name him, no. At least on there. Uh, he tried out and actually got in front of Simon and them, and he did, uh, he did Dream On and was told his look is great. He wasn't told he was pitchy. What they say? Your look is great, your vibe is great, but you just don't have it. And he was sent on his way. So, and it being the ability to sing on key, yeah, um, musical talent. <laughs> if you wanted someone to sing Dio, he could do it. Oh, I yeah. just don't think it fit with what uh, this know. was. Got to remember, I, like two thousand four. I don't think that's what American Idol was looking know. for. We're going to open and close with Holy Diver. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, he could, and, uh, to give him the credit, he could do a decent Chris Cornell, a young, decent Chris Cornell. He, they covered Big Dumb Sex, and it was shocking. How it, That's what made me notice him the first uh, time. I was like, that came out of you? 
How? Oh. Old uh, alert. I'm a huge Soundgarden Bad fan. Motor Finger I'm, gets 25th anniversary release. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. I saw that. And I'm like, gee, is it, is it sad if I go spend money on like the sixth disc 25th anniversary edition? Generation and, X starts uh, investing in IRAs and writing out wills. <laughs> <laughs> That's the secondary headline on that one. Hey, can yeah, I, I know. can I leave you guys with a good thought before we we sign off for tonight? Because we're we're running kind of late on this one. Donald Trump's plane crashes no. in a ball of no. fire. No, 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 no. And this all is a horrible, horrible <laughs> dream. All this is one of those things that you hear, and you just go, "Well, yes, finally we get confirmation on it." Carrie Fisher writes another tell-all book, and in this one reveals that during the filming of Star Wars, she was having a torrid affair with Harrison Ford. <laughs> uh, shocking. Yeah. No, it's, it's mean, not shocking actors news. Fuck, actors fuck like stone test bunnies? Who knew? But come on. How many... Okay, this is the Chris Lee moment that you're hoping for, Chris, that nerds are experiencing all over the world. It's the confirmation. The finally, we get. We knew it. They had to have been doing it. How could they not? Well, if you want, you could tell by the tension on the screen. It's yeah. fucking thirty-five years old. I mean, it's, have you interacted with a human before? Now I know we're talking about Star Wars fans, so maybe not. Right. <laughs> you know, but yeah. if you've ever interacted with a human woman before, you can tell when there's chemistry there and there's not. You can see it on the right. screen. In, in a yes. series of movies that is not known for its uh, good acting, per se. And Aaron, good chemistry like between this. love interests. Right. It, that was the it, one that, that still sticks. And yeah, you're absolutely it's because it because it was real. <laughs> Aaron, I liken this to you just told me Clay Aiken was gay. Okay. Right. <laughs> right. I'm just saying, man. I'm and, just saying. Okay, look. Here's yes, but, the, but there's a, it's, it's, not, it's not the revelation. I, it's the fact that it wasn't revealed sooner. Like, I don't know. I, would well, take her 40 years to admit that she housed Harrison Ford's penis? <laughs> or did her... For a little while. Or maybe her... Maybe her memory has been jogged. From what we heard in the late 70s, early 80s, it's a little cloudy. <laughs> definitely. She wrote postcards from the edge about her life. Yeah, definitely. She, she got lost in booze and cocaine. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shit on your Star Wars story. Well, no, I just I think it's funny because that was my, that was my first introduction to Jesus Christ, just fucking get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because so many times in my life have I been at a party and me and this chick will end up talking and we're kind of like verbally sparring and people around us will get sick of it and go, just fucking get it over with. And I'm like, don't tell me I got my game from Han Solo. Shit. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe I did, man. It could be worse. Well, you are a scruffy looking nerf herder. Uh, I can't even get upset about the scruffy part. And I have answered when I told I love you. I know. I've answered that. <laughs> but, but just think. I mean, you're, you're Harrison Ford in 1976. He's basically and nobody at that point. Fresh off being a doesn't, carpenter. It doesn't matter. No. It, no, no, no. You are hot shit when it comes to women. You're tall and good looking and charismatic. Oh, when it comes to women. Yes. Yes. But, uh, he himself. He himself in is getting him laid. Not his fame is getting him laid. And then yes. you, yeah, not not his fame. No, just his charisma. And and how hot is fucking Carrie Fisher? Back in the and, day, yeah. well, yeah, certainly. Yeah. She, now, I mean, I'm now she looks more like my. Sure, mom. we've all had special feelings about that but, special oh bikini, the, the metal bikini. I remember. Ooh, uh, <laughs> I was at the. the the band that I was in for a while with the, the married couple, um, we, we all went to a Halloween party and she had dressed up in this Princess Leia costume from Star Wars, the white robe. And she had it down pat. She actually kind of looks a little bit like Carrie Fisher. And she looked so fucking sexy. I was like, you got to stay the fuck away from me. Don't even come, <laughs> Don't even fucking come near me. If I get a, if I even even get half a chub on, your husband's gonna punch me right in the dick. <laughs> well, what I thought was funny back in 
uh, it was around the time uh, Re Revenge of the Sith came out. They had like a retrospective about Star Wars, and they were talking. You know, they they covered all the movies up to that point, and they said, uh, she said, George Lucas, after filming one of her running scenes, noticed that she wasn't wearing a bra, and a bra didn't work with the outfit, and so he's like, so we had to start strapping Carrie down. Uh huh. And she's like, I thought it'd be funny to auction off. Okay, at the end of the day, which crew member gets to to, to unstrap me and let the girls free? <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, no one gave a shit, and no one ever took me up on it. As far as the, not not fellow really? actors, the crew. Yeah. Well, you got to remember, they thought they were making the worst movie in the history of movies. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they were like, they what the no, fuck yeah. are we doing? Come the third movie, she's like, that was a metal bikini. It has no give. Every time I'd sit down, I would wink at somebody, <laughs> yeah. and ha and it was. And she's like, and it was amazing between. The first Star Wars and Return of the Jedi, how much of the crew wanted all of a sudden to get a good look at it. And I'm like, mm, right. <laughs> it's amazing how that works. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the, the quote I heard from her, I believe this was in her, her interview with Terry Gross, she said that when she would recline on Jabba the Hutt in her metal bikini, um, Boba Fett could see all the way to Florida. How many yeah. first boners do you think that metal bikini was responsible for? Still is quite a, quite a few, quite a few. And I got to say, here's I was. I didn't say I, repeats, Aaron. I said first. <laughs> I, I wasn't like I was. I was on that cusp of where I was just getting interested in like girls, but I was more interested in Star Wars when I first saw that movie in the yeah. theater. Fast forward like seven, eight years. And they had a picture of her in that bikini in a magazine. And I remember flipping through and then all of a sudden coming across that picture going, when the fuck did she get this hot? She wasn't this hot when I looked at this one in the theater. Oh, yeah. oh shit, I missed, yeah. I missed this part. I got to watch this again. And my Hello. dad's sitting there. With my the dad's, door shut. <laughs> my dad's sitting there laughing and he goes, <clears throat> she looked that good back then. You just were a little preoccupied with the, with the laser sword fights. And I'm like, oh, okay, thanks, dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Yes, Good she times. did. Yes. By the way, just real quick, yes. since we since we brought it up, I am more excited about Rogue One than I was about Episode Seven. Oh fuck yeah! This is their chance to to show us something really cool in this universe. Because yeah. I'm hoping it, it's it's dark and violent and not yeah. like yes cartoony. Yes. You know, because it's just, I keep, like, every time I see anything new about it, I just have that flash of Mon Mothra going, many Bothans died for this information. And I'm like, good, show it. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I want to see someone fuck someone up with the force. Not this, well, we're going to cut your arm off and it's going to cauterize it right away. And you're going to, or you're going to take, you know, a lightsaber across and you're going to become one with the force and just disappear and leave a pile of dirty clothes for stormtroopers to do later. No, I want to see some war because that's what to me was always missing and i'm looking at this movie going this is it this is the, this is the one i will go to the theaters to see because i didn't go to the theaters to see episode seven no i did i did inform mandy there'll be another day in december i'll be going to the movies by myself again <laughs> oh she doesn't like star wars at all no she doesn't understand it she was like go go see your movie Have okay fun. but you do realize that this one okay and apparently, Dude, I'm, an, she didn't, I'm, an, she didn't, I'm an alt right. I'm an alt right. Whatever. She didn't watch Otis cartoons Day. as a kid. I got it. I got it. But the but she's she's very much on a social justice warrior level. D just point out to her that the lead is a female. That there's hardly any white males in this movie in lead roles. Well, I did point out to her last year the several strong uh, uh, female. Uh, uh, just the several strong females in the Star Wars universe. You know, how pa it. Padme's in the Padme's leader of Parliament. You know, Princess Leia, all that fun stuff. I mean, it's that's just a hail mary if you really want to go see it with her. Just like you're throwing it up, like you know, 
like Doug Flutie. You know, you're just like, oh, someone come down with it, please. But you know, I mean, they're trying to be like, you know, Leia's leading the rebels and Vader's, you know, the, the fucking empire's the patriarch. And trust me, I tried packaging it all like that. <laughs> all right. My, uh, I was just trying to give you a hand, but I should have known you covered all them bases. <laughs> yeah, I love her, but we don't talk politics. Because <laughs> I'm in the middle and like I said, she makes Bernie fascist or <laughs> Bernie fascist. Bernie Sanders look like a fascist. <laughs> Oh, good times, good times. All right, so is, is that it? We're wrapping it up? Yeah, I say that's about it for this week. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Twitter. I told my roommate I was going to get gassed two and a half hours ago. <laughs> or three and a half. At 7.30, I'm like, hey, I'm going to get gassed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks, everybody, who's listening, who's downloaded. And uh, I guess people have downloaded have been going to check out uh, the uh, the archive of the live election night podcast it is available awdio audio.com check it out just look up unregimented or christopher media there at unregimented pod on twitter at unregimented on the instagram i, I fired that back up today apparently i made an account we never posted it anymore. well guess guess we gotta get on that uh, you can follow us on Facebook to like us, share us, all that fun, happy horse shit. Uh, yeah. Anything else, gentlemen? Or is that it? Yeah. Uh, uh, we'll see you me. next week. Yep. Yes. Catch you next week, guys. Later. Bye. enjoy this show and want more people to know about it head on over to itunes leave a comment and rate it five stars make sure you like and share us on facebook and don't forget to follow us on twitter just search for christopher media thank you in advance for supporting christopher media by clicking on the paypal button and by clicking through to all the sponsors who support christophermedia.net most importantly we would like to take the time to extend an extra special thanks to you christopher media could not exist without your support thank you for visiting christophermedia.net and thank you for listening listening christopher media let's make some noise thank you for visiting christophermedia.net hey we get it you don't want to be hearing a progressive commercial right now so let us tell you something you do want to hear you are powerful you're a warrior who bathes in your enemy's tears then you step out of that refreshing tear bath and into a bathrobe that somehow looks good on you yeah you can pull off a robe. There. Don't you feel better? You'll also feel better when you save money for driving safely with Snapshot from Progressive. Mmm, savings you can use to buy more robes. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Snapshot not available in California, North Carolina, or from all agents. Wendy's new classic chicken sandwich is now in the two for five. And that's reason to celebrate. Try the new classic and then take your mouth on a victory lap with the iconic Dave's single, the delicious spicy chicken sandwich, spicy or crispy 10-piece nuggets, or just get another classic chicken sandwich. Taste greatness today with Wendy's two for five. We got you. For a limited time, a la carte only. Price and participation may vary. Less Wendy's.